The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. We sure have made a lot of cool projects over the years, and some of those projects, even though they were really awesome, could always be improved. One such project would be the Raspberry Pi Main Portable. It was a portable little gaming device that we made back in 2012. One thing I'd like to do better about it is the screen. It had kind of a poor composite screen. Also, the batteries were hacked up and needed an external charger, and it wasn't that energy efficient. So in today's episode, we're going to improve that design. We're going to use the Raspberry Pi A+, so it uses less energy and just smaller. We're going to use the Adafruit TFT screen, so we have perfect pixels. And finally, we're going to build the battery charger into the unit like it should be. Let's get started. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. This is the new Raspberry Pi A+. It's like the B+, with the expanded header, but it's much smaller. It has a single USB port, which means it doesn't have the high current USB Ethernet chip, which actually takes more power than the ARM does, strangely enough. So this is a good choice for portable applications, and that's what we're gonna do with it. We're going to make Pi MAME Portable Rev 2, but better this time. Let's go through the steps. First, we'll set up an SD card with the Cupcade OS, then we will test the OS with the Raspberry Pi B+. The reason we're doing that is because we've used the B+, before. We want to make sure it works on that before we move to something new. Then we'll test it on the A+, making sure it works, because this is what we want to actually use. We'll use the GPIO as the game control buttons before we used a USB-based controller, but there's so much GPIO, we can add all the buttons we could possibly want, which is good. We don't have to use up the USB port. Then we'll test it with the Adafruit TFT display before we used a small, cheap, composite LCD screen, which worked. It's okay for arcade games, but it's kind of fuzzy. So the Adafruit TFT display is a digital display that uses the spy bus and the expansion header for perfect pixels. Finally, we'll connect it to a battery charger circuit. Our original unit had a rechargeable battery, but an external charger. For this, we've designed a new charger that we've built right into it. So you can just plug in a power source and it'll charge. And you can also charge it while playing. If you've never created a boot SD card for a Raspberry Pi, here's how. Now you can't just copy the files to the SD card because then it'll just be like a memory device when you stick it in. You need to do a low level image copy so this can boot. Uh, we have the Cupcade image file here and I downloaded a program called Win32 Disk Imager. If you're using Windows, that's the way to go. I'm gonna stick in the disk. Okay, all right, the correct device is E. I don't wanna accidentally flash my hard drive or something. And we're gonna grab this off the desktop. Okay. Yes, I'm sure. Now the waiting game begins. Here's our flashed image. Adafruit screen. So here are the extra pins that we get with the B+. Let's apply power and see what happens. Okay, a white screen. Looks like it's booting. The moral of the story, an SD with an image on it is different than just an SD card with files on it. Now let's try it with the A+. All right, it works with the A+. Now we can move on to the next part. Now it's time to add the controls. The Cupcade OS makes it really easy. The GPIO can act as our control buttons instead of having to add an additional controller through the USB port. I like to use tack switches. They're relatively inexpensive, they're self-contained, and they have a nice clicking noise so you know that they're working. They have four leads, although the leads going this way are connected to each other. All we have to do is connect one lead to the GPIO and tie the other leads down to ground, and it will work with MAME. The motherboard on the back of this monitor is a little Linux computer that we keep around for situations just like this. What I can do is access the contents of this Linux card directly and make the changes that we need. So I'm going to run a file 
program as a super user. Now we're running the Dolphin file viewer and anything we do in here will be as super user. Let's go into etc. Mod probe D and we want to change this configuration file. Use G edit. The old arcade game, some of them had the screen sideways like Pac-Man or the shooter games like 1941. I want the screen default to be normal, 4-3, so we're gonna change the rotation to 90 degrees. We'll save that. Okay, we change the monitor view. In order to use the GPIO as keys to control MAME, we need to run a program that will simulate that for us. And this program will run every time that the system is started. It's on GitHub, it's the Adafruit Retro game. And these are everything we need to compile our own version. The one we'll be editing is Retro Game C. I'm gonna download the zip file. Do, 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 and we'll put it in our downloads folder. We're going to copy the zip file that we just downloaded and put it onto our Raspberry Pi file system card. Home, come on. Pi, okay, we'll put it right here. Paste. Okay, now we need to compile the C program that will map the GPIO to keys. We have the Raspberry Pi hooked up on the network, so I'm gonna SSH into it remotely. Yeah, I believe it is pi at We are in. Let's see. <laughs> I am in the matrix. Okay, we're going to unzip the file that we downloaded. All right. Now we should have a folder for it. Great. Let's go into that folder. Data. All right. We need the, C oh, and this keyboard is not great. Okay. This is the file we're going to compile. Hey, that rhymes. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, here we go. This number is a GPIO, so if you connect GPIO number two to ground, it will simulate pushing left on the keyboard. We'll use these defaults, but we want to add a few more for the additional buttons that we added because I like lots of buttons on my arcade game. GPIO 19 will be connected to uh, key space. And pin. 13, I'm sorry, GPIO 13 will be left shift. And then I'll put the rest of these in and complete the file. Here are the original keys, up, down, left, right, two uh, action buttons, and then credit start button. We've added these. So we have a total of eight buttons we can use along with a directional pad. <sighs> the files have been compiled and now our button should be automatically mapped when we start the Raspberry Pi. Now it's time for a tech timeout. I've been improving the FPGA LCD driver code in my spare time. I now have it mapping RAM to simulated dots. Uh, it's just a bunch of garbage in RAM, but it is running off RAM on the FPGA. You can also change the dot type. Here are some round dots, tile dots, textured dots, and chunky dots. I've also started working on the SD card driver as well, so I can take images from the card and put them onto this display. It's been a lot of fun working with the FPGA. And it rhymes. I've attached the GPIO to the Raspberry Pi A Plus along with the LCD screen. Let's see if that C file we compiled made the changes that we need. Okay, the orientation of the screen is correct. It's horizontal instead of portrait, so that's good. 
So here's our up, down, left, right, and our action buttons, and then our selection buttons we have here. Let's see if we can get one of these games to run. Okay, oh, I can hit escape to shut down the system cleanly, that's good. Sky Shark. I like this game, I wonder if it'll work. Oh no, ROM file's missing. Kill me. Do I have any working? Oh, come on, Kadash has to work. Oh, it works. <laughs> if any of you remember Kadash in the arcades, it was like this weird side-scrolling role-playing game. It was insane, and you could recover hit points by sticking quarters in. Oh yeah, it's working, all right. Which button puts in money? Oh, that's pause. Oh, he's fighting the black pudding. Okay, that's the escape button. I'm not finding a coin button for this game. Well, the uh, GPIO seems to work. That's the important thing. On the screen here, we have a drawing of the Raspberry Pi A+. And the most important part are the pins that make up the header. I also drew the screen, the LCD screen in relation to it. So when it's plugged in, where it will be. And with those measurements, I was able to determine what the case would actually look like. And this is the shape I came up with. I print out a paper pattern just to test. And I think this will work. It's, it's pretty small, but it's also not so small that you can't hang on to it. I've seen weird game systems where the controls are right down to the edge and it's like, how would you hang on to that? Like nobody thought about that. And there will be a little bit of thickness in the back for the two batteries, but I want the batteries to be in one solid piece. So I want this to be as modular and kit-like as possible. Using this drawing, we can determine where the PCB will be. So we draw this as the PCB. So we can put this size into Eagle and then use the lower left-hand corner measurements to figure out the placement of all the switches. That way, what we design in Eagle will match what we design in Adobe Illustrator and make something that fits together, hopefully, perfectly. Let's take a look at Eagle. This is the schematic Felix drew. It's mostly a charge circuit that he's been working on for a couple months, but it also has the charge jack and the buttons for the GPIO. Here's what the board will actually look like. Everything is going to be on the top surface, so it's a single layer board. We have all of our pins up here that will interconnect the Raspberry Pi to the charge circuit, and all of our tack switches are in the proper position from the lower left-hand corner. And we also have drill holes marked for where to put the screws. Now Felix will use laser paint to make the PCB that he designed Ah, thank you, Felix. In today's episode, we prepped the A Plus to become a cool, portable MAME console. We designed a case around it, we made sure the GPIO worked with our custom compiled C file, and Felix designed a PCB that will be the base of our kit system. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we'll get this PCB stuffed, attach it to the parts we've already tested, and then build a cool case around it. We'll see you then. because it's really self-conscious having five people watch me type in an <laughs> operating system I don't know. <laughs> See, I, we should just have Felix do this episode. I mean, it's Japanese sword. I want him dead! <laughs> Before we, it is kind of hard to explain. It doesn't sound logical. See, this is why we don't film mistakes, because it would take up entire episodes. <laughs>
in a good way or a bad way. I can't detect sarcasm anymore with Allison. Damn it, I was thinking about Samurai Cop. We just can't stop thinking about Samurai Cop. <laughs> That doesn't make any sense. Never a cop. Hey, what's a nice all American girl like you doing with a bunch of geeks like that? All right, Samurai Cop. Is the camera warm and ready? <laughs> Let's just see I can read eyes. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com.